In BikeCAD version 10, we have the option to model a seat mast. Unlike a seat post, which is inserted inside the seat tube, a seat mast slides over top of the seat tube. In the seat post dialog box, we can toggle between seat post and seat mast with the seat mast icon. It is still up to us to change the diameter of the tube so that the seat mast will be large enough to fit over the seat tube. We will also most likely want to make our seat mast shorter than a typical seat post. If you add a seat post binder brazed to your frame, then that seat post binder will automatically attach itself to the seat mast. If you had been using a seat post clamp, then that seat post clamp will automatically attach itself to the bottom edge of your seat mast. It will most likely be necessary to make the seat post clamp larger to accommodate the larger diameter of the seat mast. If a pinch boss is used instead, then that pinch boss will likely need to be similarly shifted to account for the larger diameter seat mast. Another thing that the seat mast will inherit from the frame is the profile at the end of the seat tube. In the tubing dialog box, the toggle button that controls the seat tube end profile will be applied to the seat mast if a seat mast is used. When using a seat mast, it is typical to extend the seat tube further than one would if a seat post were used. In the primary dimensions dialog box, if we have the seat tube length center to center option selected, then this fixes the location of the seat tube top tube joint. We can make the seat tube itself longer by changing the field controlling seat tube extension above the top tube. As we do this, we'll notice that our seat stays are located with respect to the top of the seat tube. We'll most likely want to shift them down by the same distance our seat tube was extended up. 